Welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and let's talk about the mid credit scene of Shang-Chi in The Legend of the Ten Rings. We get a huge surprise as Shang and Katie meet Wong, Bruce Banner, and Captain Marvel. We also learn that the Ten Rings are much older and more powerful than we first thought. The Ten Rings are stronger than anything in your universe. So let's break down this scene, these massive cameos, who this beacon is calling, where the rings might have come from, and what this could mean for the future of Shang-Chi and the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. For thousands of years, the Ten Rings gave our family legendary power. Okay, so Wong takes Shang and Katie to the Sanctum Sanctorum, or maybe to Karmertage, it's kind of hard to tell. And they are joined by Bruce Banner and Captain Marvel via the same hologram zoom technology that we saw in Endgame. With Wong's magical presentation skills, we see the inner workings of the Ten Rings, and Wong says that the rings don't match anything from his codex, which is big, considering all the ancient information that the masters of the mystic arts possess. And this immediately raises some big questions about their origins. There are many magic rings in this world, Bilbo Baggins, and none of them should be used lightly. So Wong then asked Bruce Banner for his scientific opinion. And yes, that's Bruce Banner and not Professor Hulk. And that just by itself is huge information. The last time we saw Bruce, he was big and green after fusing with the Hulk. From what we know about his transformation, it didn't seem like it was temporary. So how the heck is he back to being puny Banner? I'm so confused. These are confusing times. <laughs> We're actually going to release a video talking about exactly that in just a few days. So anyways, both Bruce and Carol say they have no clue what the rings are made of, confirming they are not vibranium or Chitari tech, meaning that the rings came from someplace else far away, alien enough that even Captain Marvel doesn't recognize the material. But Banner adds that the rings are very old. And finally, Wong adds that when Shang uses the rings for the first time, it was felt on Karmar Taj. I felt a great disturbance in the force. Meaning that the ring's energy is powerful enough to be noticed by the master of the mystic arts. Then we learn that the rings serve as a type of beacon, sending a message to some unknown source. Now after this, Carol pretty much bails on the Zoom call, leaving Bruce to welcome Shang to the Avengers. At least I assume so. I mean, I'm pretty sure the Avengers could use a skilled martial artist like Shang-Chi who has 10 magic rings. Thank you. Okay, so that's what actually happens in the scene, and it leaves us with some major questions. What's the deal with the rings? Who or what are they messaging? The movie never explains where the rings come from, when Wu sort of found them and then uses them to conquer civilizations over a thousand years. We know, though, that the rings are very powerful, and based on what Wong is saying, they are connected to some other force out in the universe, or possibly the multiverse. Keep talking. The MCU changed a lot about the rings, not just the fact that they're pretty much bracelets, but also their powers. In the comics, each ring has its own unique ability, but in the MCU, the rings don't really operate separately. They simply imbue their wearer with energy. I guess that makes sense to avoid similarities to the Infinity Stones. In the comics, the Mandarin's rings are actually McLuhan technology. The McLuhans are a race of shape-shifting dragon aliens. And if the MCU does go in that direction, it's a great way to introduce Fen Fang Foom in the sequel. But I'm not so sure we're going to see the McLuhans, or at least they're not tied to the rings like they are in the comics. Why? Well, for one, that's too predictable, and the MCU has already altered a lot about Shang-Chi's origin. Plus, we just saw dragons from another dimension, so they're probably going to do something else. So, what's the secret of the rings? Well, we've got a few theories that we're going to run through. The Ten Rings are stronger than anything in your universe. Remember, Nan kept referring to this dimension as your universe, meaning the people of Ta Lo and the Protector Dragon came from somewhere else, some other universe in the multiverse. Maybe the rings arrive from another dimension. So this makes the rings interdimensional artifacts that might draw their energy from other dimensions. There is some basis in the comics for this, as some heroes draw their powers from different universes that are out in the multiverse. That thing will kill you! He's right, it's magic! So am I. Since the MCU are diving into the multiverse with their upcoming movies, this makes sense. While technology is heavily tied into the multiverse, magic is also a part of it, as proven by Doctor Strange messing with the multiverse in Spider-Man No Way Home, with him seemingly sending himself and Spidey into other universes with the spell gone wrong. Don't cast that spell. It's too dangerous. Fine. I won't. You stupid <laughs> You idiot! And then there's Wanda, who's confirmed to be able to travel through the multiverse with her magic. 
So Shang-Chi could tie into that. Personally, I would love to see him show up in Doctor Strange 2 as he learns about the origins of the rings and join the other heroes on their multiversal adventure. Since Shang-Chi dealt with the other dimensions and some magic, it's possible that the rings are some form of magical artifacts, but they could still be pieces of technology just like in the comics, but they're so advanced and ancient that they seem like magic, which ties into Thor's explanation about magic and science. Your ancestors called it magic, and you call it science. Well, I come from a place where they're one and the same thing. To research this video, I wanted to understand more about ancient Chinese history, so I watched the documentary Mystery of the Disorderly Warriors, which explains the mystery of the Terracotta Army. Each one different from the next, each with its own facial expression, clothing, and hairstyle. And this is one of thousands of documentaries that I can watch on CuriosityStream, the sponsor of this video. So I watch a lot of video essays, and I see CuriosityStream advertised all the time, so I finally checked it out. Now I'm hooked. And get this, if you use the code ScreenCrush, then it only costs $14.99 per year. This is a streaming service that's filled with thousands of short and long form documentaries on a wide variety of topics. There's also The Crash Course in World History, a film that filled me in on the history of China and well, everywhere else that ain't America. They make it so easy to navigate with different collections and staff picks. It's a lot like looking for movies in a video store. And the service also works on any device, anywhere, all the time. So again, if you want to try out CuriosityStream, and you really should, it's great. Use the code ScreenCrush to get access for just $14.99 a year. There are relics that predate the universe itself. But maybe the Ten Rings are the MCU's version of another artifact from the comics, and that's the Quantum Bands. Do you guys just put the word quantum in front of everything? The bands have immense cosmic power and allow energy manipulation, like we saw Shang do in the movie. And they grant their wearer all kinds of other useful abilities. Also, the bands require worthiness, like Thor's hammer. To be worthy of using their full power, the wearer must be calm-minded with peaceful intentions, just like Shang-Chi. While others can wear the bands, if they are not worthy, they won't be able to unlock the band's true power. Wen Wu had the rings for hundreds of years. However, they finally unlocked their full potential once Shang-Chi used them, making him worthy. Plus, the bands are worn on the wrist just like the rings are in the movie. Yes, well, that's, uh, that's a very, very interesting theory. And I gotta mention the Nega Bands, which are very similar to the Quantum Bands, though they are not as powerful. The Nega Bands are sort of a Kree knockoff of the Quantum Bands. Many different heroes have worn the bands, but the most notable of them all is Marvel, the original Captain Marvel from the comics. So that's an interesting connection. Of course, the question is why would Marvel combine the Ten Rings with these bands? Well, that's just something they do, like merging the Space Stone with the Cosmic Cube, or the Time Stone with the Eye of Agamotto. And of course, the big one, the Mandarin being Shang-Chi's father, and all of the changes Marvel's doing to the Ten Rings. The MCU always combines and shifts stuff from the comics to fit their stories better. I don't think anyone in the MCU is going to refer to the rings as the Quantum Bands, I just think they're going to serve a similar role. So here's how it goes in the comics. The Quantum Bands are awarded by the Cosmic Bean Eon to those that it deems worthy to be protectors of the universe. But I doubt we're going to see Eon in the MCU, because he looks like a tree stump with a wig on its head. There are plenty of other cosmic beings out there that could serve this role much better, and we're going to talk about them in a moment. But being the protector of the universe is a big deal, and it might be the direction the MCU is going for. Shang-Chi is descended from the protectors of Ta Lo, so that duty could extend to other realities and dimensions. So what I think happened with the rings is that they were created eons ago by some powerful cosmic entity either in the main MCU universe, or in some other dimension or alternate universe. That cosmic being chose its protector. However, at some point, the rings ended up on Earth, just like all the cool cosmic stuff in the universe. It is the collection point for all lost and unloved things, like you. Wen Wu found the rings, but he never unlocked their true power, since he wasn't worthy. Shang-Chi is chosen by some cosmic law, so he's the one that's able to wield the rings and not his father. And once he used them and changed their energy to fiery gold and orange, he unlocked the ring's full power and also activated the beacon inside them. So, if we go with the idea that the rings are the MCU's version of the Quantum Bands, what's interesting about the Quantum Bands is that they draw their power from the Quantum Zone, which is the Quantum Realm in the MCU. That's an interesting connection, with the Quantum Realm playing such a big role in the MCU in recent years. Plus, it's bound to have a major connection to Kang the Conqueror. 
since we've already seen this city, which is probably Chronopolis, Kang's realm, and the Quantum Realm. So who knows, maybe the reason why the rings are unknown to Carol, Wong, and Banner is because they're not from the past, but actually the far future. When activated, the energy of the bands even radiates colors very similar to what we see in the Quantum Realm. And this brings us back to the multiverse stuff from earlier. This could be major for Shang-Chi's future. The Quantum Realm might be how all the Kang variants will start the multiversal war. This is probably the MCU's next mega crossover event, which will be Secret Wars. If the ring's energy is connected to the Quantum Realm like the Quantum Bands, this makes Shang-Chi into one of the most important superheroes going into the Secret Wars event. Good for you, dude. Who knows? Maybe when the multiverses begin to collide and whole universes are erased, the rings will connect into some quantum force to save the multiverse. I think that doing the Quantum Band spin could be fun, but the rings could just be 10 magical or cosmic rings that have no connection to the bands. And of course, there's the beam that the rings are contacting. Which brings us to the question, who is this mysterious cosmic figure? Deuce. Nah, I'm just messing with you. We're good. One interesting possibility is the Phoenix Force. It's one of the oldest and most powerful cosmic beings in the universe, so connecting it with Shang-Chi could be fun. And this isn't so far-fetched, since recently in the comics, Shang-Chi became the host of the Phoenix Force for a short while, so never say never. Although the Phoenix is synonymous with Jean Grey and the X-Men, and Dark Phoenix's stench is still very fresh, so it's probably best to distance Shang-Chi from it. Also, it'll be wise to wait a few years and introduce the X-Men into the MCU first, and then do the Dark Phoenix story properly. And those are all fun ideas, but we have one real big theory that we think is gonna tie into Shang-Chi, Phase 4, Phase 5, Phase 6, the Fantastic Four, maybe even your mom. It's your mom! What if the Ten Rings were actually created by the biggest beings in the universe, the Celestials? A celestial like a god? Small G, son. These are cosmic gods, and they're shaping up to be the next big thing in the MCU. The Celestials will play a big role in the Eternals, so the Celestials have their cosmic hands into everything in the universe. But despite their power, they appointed the Eternals to protect Earth from the Deviants. I guess because gods don't have time to deal with the day-to-day -day stuff in the universe. So perhaps, billions of years ago, while the universe was in chaos, the Celestials created ten rings and chose a protector who will serve them. A type of champion who keeps order in the universe while the Celestials do their godly things. Maybe the Celestials needed a protector that would deal with other realities and dimensions. That's something that Doctor Strange is doing now, but we're talking billions of years ago, a time when Earth wasn't even created yet. This could explain the mystery around the rings and their awesome cosmic powers, and set Shang-Chi as a universal and interdimensional hero. So the rings could be messaging the Celestials, not necessarily as a nefarious warning, but maybe an announcement to its creators that the rings have been reactivated and a new protector has been found. The Celestials are not usually the bad guys in the comics, they're sort of somewhere in between. But two of the three Celestials that we've met in the MCU so far were evil, and the other one is a giant severed head, so I guess maybe the Celestials are not very good in the MCU. If that's the case, maybe Marvel will take some ideas for the Celestials from Earth-X. In that alternate universe, the Celestials reproduced in a very creepy way. They impregnated planets with their essence, which is how the Celestials are born. Oh. This means devastation for this pregnant planet when the celestial egg hatches. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Hey, don't blame me. I wasn't the one who came up with that. This is something that we might see in the Eternals. If the Celestials are allowed to breed unchecked, they would overpopulate the universe, which would lead to the collapse of said universe. But the universe loves its cosmic balance, and a population control was created in the form of Galactus. Galactus keeps the celestial population under control as he feeds on the planets the celestials have impregnated. So anyways, how does this connect to Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings? Galactus' power cosmic is one of the most powerful energies in the universe, and Galactus is known to create heralds who seek out planets for him to feed on, like the Silver Surfer, who is also imbued with the power cosmic. So it's possible that the rings were created by Galactus, and the beacon is to message him that Earth has been impregnated by celestials which doesn't really bode well for Earth either way. Either the world is gonna hatch into a celestial baby, or Galactus is gonna eat it. Well, that sucks. 
but finding planets for Galactus is still the Silver Surfer's job. So what if the Celestials created the rings and the job of the Protector is to defend the pregnant planet from Galactus? You got this. Thank you. This could be more thematically satisfying since it'll allow Shang-Chi to forge his own destiny. Instead of being a tool for these cosmic beings, he'll find his own way and use the energy of the Ten Rings for good and protection. Everything you need is already inside of you. And oh yeah, there's always Mephisto. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Not sure how he ties into the rings, but what's a Marvel theory nowadays without mentioning Mephisto at least once? So yeah, a lot of possibilities. And I'll admit, we could be jumping to some crazy conclusions with all these theories. But what's the point of speculation if we don't go big, right? From all these ideas, I kind of think the Celestial's connection makes the most sense. They created the rings, and Shang-Chi's job is to protect the universe from cosmic threats like Galactus. But that's just what we think. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.